Earth, the planet we call our home. From deserts to snowy mountains, as surely as the seasons change, through the passage of time, every inch of our world is, as it has always been, teeming with life, with creatures large and small. Join us in celebrating the mighty wilderness in Wild About. Far from civilization, deep in the primordial jungles of the world, in the untamed tropical wilderness, in the dark muddy waters, something is lurking right beneath the surface, patiently waiting, as old as time itself, has survived for millions of years. A creature of neither land nor sea, a primeval hunter, a prehistoric killer. One of the oldest still living orders of reptiles. Crocodilians have been the primary semi-aquatic predators of lakes, rivers, and swamps, anywhere warm for millions of years. Relatively slow moving on land, they were born to swim the dark muddy waters of the tropics, attacking anything that comes near the river's edge. Crocodilians appeared over 80 million years ago during the late Cretaceous period as the last remaining distant reptile relative of the dinosaurs, having evolved from a common ancestor. Ancient crocodilians even having hunted mighty dinosaur predators, such as the massive Danosuchus, which grew to be as large as 36 feet, feeding even on Tyrannosaurus. Compared to the saltwater crocodile of today at a mere 23 feet, crocodilians today range all tropical climates even subtropical areas such as Southeast United States and around the Yangtze River in China. Though all highly similar in appearance, they can be divided into three families. Crocodilidae, or true crocodiles, distinguished by their V-shaped snout and visible teeth even when the mouth is closed. Existing across Sub-Saharan Africa, in India, Southeast Asia, Northern Australia, and Mesoamerica. Alligatoridae, including all alligators and caimans, which can be recognized by their U-shaped snout and less visible lower teeth, populating freshwater lakes, rivers, and swamps throughout the Americas and China. And Gavialidae, including the gharial and false gharial, with their distinctive narrow snout ending in a prominent bulge for the nostrils to stay above water, found in Southeast Asia and India. All are carnivorous, most hunting larger mammals, birds, fish, and even humans. They are consequently among the largest reptiles, with even the smallest breed, the dwarf caiman, being three feet long. They all have similarly solid builds reminiscent of lizards, significantly elongated flattened snouts, reduced limbs with webbed toes, and laterally compressed tails all making them specially adapted for fast swimming and high maneuverability in the water, as well as a specialized rib cage, allowing the thorax to collapse during diving, and widened pelvis that allows for the internal organs to be pushed down to accommodate more air in the lungs. The eyes, ears, and nostrils of crocodilians are also located on the top of the head, allowing them to stalk prey with the rest of their body completely submerged. While swimming, crocodilians rely entirely on the side-to-side -side movement of the muscular broad tail to propel them through the water, with all of their limbs held close to the body to minimize drag. When stopping or turning, the crocodilian extends one or more of his limbs to adjust direction and speed. 
typically holding a low cruising speed to minimize exposure to their prey. All crocodilians have two modes of terrestrial locomotion. A low walk, which is very low in energy consumption and comparatively slow, where the arms and legs are slouched and held low as the crocodilian walks. And the more common high walk, which is closer to the gait of mammals than other reptiles. Holding the legs underneath the body with the joints straighter, lifting the body higher off the ground even allowing for short sprints and quick dashes. This is accomplished with swiveling ankle joints unique among reptiles. They can also use both their hind legs and their tail to be able to leap into the air. For all crocodilians, their primary sense is their sense of smell. Highly developed, they can smell prey from miles away. Crocodilians all have depth hearing, comparable to birds and most mammals, and are able to hear both in air and underwater. Though their eyesight varies considerably between species, all have protective nictitating membranes covering their eyes while submerging which also contains glands, excreting lubricants to keep eyes consistently clean in the muddy waters. Often seen after the crocodilian emerges again as drying tears. The entirety of a crocodilian's body is covered in non-overlapping scales of varying shapes and sizes, known as scutes, covering an already thick, hardened skin covered in a layer of keratin. Throughout their life cycle, new scutes are continuously produced, emerging underneath the old scales eventually pushing individual scales out from time to time. Many of the scutes are reinforced by bony plates known as osteoderms, forming a protective armor along their back and neck. Each of the scutes contains blood vessels and can absorb or radiate heat to or from the body. As crocodilians are cold-blooded, depending on the surrounding air and water temperature for their internal temperatures, using the sun and water to regulate its body temperature as well as keeping the mouth open to provide cooling by evaporation. Additionally, some scoots also feature a single pore, known as an integumentary sense organ, which is believed to aid the crocodilian sensing vibrations in water. Scoots along the tail and abdomen are often neatly ordered squares, whereas the scoots on the neck and flanks are commonly loose and softer, allowing for greater movement in contrast to the scoots along the head, which are commonly fused directly to the skull. The head of a crocodilian, regardless of shape, is always characterized by the long jawline. The skull having powerful muscle attachment points capable of exerting massive pressure on any prey caught in its jaws. Some having the strongest bite forces in the animal kingdom, with the saltwater crocodile's bite measured to have a force of nearly 4,000 pounds. While the gario and false gharial's thin jaws designed more for quick bites to capture fish, rather than the larger mammalian prey of most other crocodilians. The muscles used for opening the jaw are considerably weaker, with mouths easily held shut by any human or a decent rope. Crocodilian teeth vary considerably in shape and size, and are indicative of their preferred diet, from blunt and dull teeth of varying sizes set in wide snouts. As with the Chinese alligator, and the broad-snouted caiman, specializing in eating hard-shelled mollusks, to sharp and needle-like teeth, such as that of the Australian freshwater cockatiel, and the gharial, arranged in neat rows of uniform size in narrow snouts, intended to bite into smaller fish, and crocodilians falling in between having more general diets, such as the saltwater crocodile, Nile crocodile, or American alligator, feeding on invertebrates, amphibians, and fish, as well as other reptiles, birds, and larger mammals. All have approximately 80 teeth that are continuously replaced throughout their life cycle, up to 50 times per tooth, with new budding teeth growing next to existing ones, ready to emerge whenever required. Hunting strategies vary as well, though most commonly used is a stalk and ambush technique, 
where the crocodilian remains mostly submerged, inching closer to its unknowing prey, before suddenly striking, killing their prey, either by drowning or by whiplash by violently shaking it once in the crocodilian's grip. Most are known to be highly opportunistic, eating anything that comes near, living or dead, also using a variety of techniques to lure their prey, such as caimans, who herd fish into shallower waters, using their tail for easy capture. As with most other reptilians, crocodilians are unable to chew their food, instead relying on twisting and tearing motions to rip away flesh of their prey, which is then swallowed whole. Or with animals with thick hides too tough to handle, they will wait until the body becomes putrid and comes apart more easily. The meat is then taken to the two-part stomach, where the initial chamber, a muscular gizzard, grinds the food into a pulp, followed by the highly acidic digestive chamber, capable of breaking down even bits of bone and cartilage, as their digestive system is relatively slow compared to other mammalian predators. Crocodilians can often survive much longer on little food, even surviving for months on a single large meal, digesting slowly and living on stored fat between meals requiring as little as 10% of the amount of food required for a lion of the same weight, thanks to a specialized, highly complex circulatory system, including a heart with four chambers and double ventricles. Crocodilians can lower their own heart rate while submerged, using cog-like valves inside the heart to shut off blood flow to the lungs, which have been emptied prior to diving to reduce buoyancy, their heart beating as slow as one or two beats per minute while underwater allowing them to stay under for a common period of less than 15 minutes, up to two whole hours. Their maximum diving depth is unknown, but crocodilians have been documented to be able to dive at least 66 feet. As they ascend back to the surface, their heart rate begins to increase once they come up for breath. While in hotter climates, some crocodilians wallow in mud to keep cool. Most crocodilians reside in lowland freshwater bodies. But many can easily withstand brackish water or hypersaline lakes. Some even capable of venturing out into ocean water for short periods of time. With a saltwater crocodile prominently able to swim far out to sea and colonize new areas. Though, as with most crocodiles, it prefers freshwater rivers. Gharials are similarly found in rivers and lakes, spending most of their time submerged, while the American alligator prefers swamps and more turgid riverbeds. Often found amidst the thick reeds and along the muddy banks, South American dwarf caimans prefer cooler, fast-flowing streams by contrast, with some species in Venezuela only spreading out over flooded savannas during the rainy season. Most crocodilians are strictly territorial and highly solitary, frequently defending basking spots, nesting sites, nurseries, and feeding areas. Only rarely social, as with the Nile crocodile, occasionally collaborating in a kill or sharing basking sites. Though many crocodile species are silent, most communicate extensively, despite lacking anything like mammalian vocal cords usually by grunts, roars, and bellows among adults, as well as head slapping, where the crocodilian elevates their head over the water, snaps their jaws shut, and splashes down into the water, which is used by more social species, as well as for courtship purposes. Generally polygamous, crocodilian males attempt to mate with as many females as possible, with dominant males patrolling large areas with several females contained within, with frequent courtship displays among many crocodilians, including the American alligator, often rubbing against each other, circling around and swimming in complex displays. Mating then usually occurs in the water, the female arching her back, submerging her head and tail, while the male rubs across her neck, mounting her with his hind legs, aligning their tails. Mating lasts up to 15 minutes. The female crocodilian then constructs a simple nest usually a hole in the ground or a small mound, made up of vegetation, sand, or soil, laying a clutch of anywhere between 10 to 50 eggs. 
protected by hard shells and incubated for two to three months before hatching. The temperature of the incubation commonly determines the sex of the hatchlings, with higher temperatures stimulating male hormone development. Communication occurs already within the eggs, as hatchlings near hatching tap their shells to communicate with the other eggs, helping them synchronize their hatching. Unusual for reptiles. Female crocodilians show extensive care of their young, with the mother waiting patiently by the mound until hatching. When the hatchlings start calling for her aid by yelping, at which point she excavates the hatchlings and takes them into her mouth leading them into the water. After which the hatchlings stay close to their mother for a period of between a few months to two years. With caiman hatchlings often taken to shared nurseries or creches, where they are cared for by other females as well. Mortality rates are high among hatchlings with the nests themselves in danger of floods, overheating, or predation, such as the American alligator's eggs, frequently targeted by the raccoon and black bears, or African crocodile eggs, targeted by baboons, otters, warthogs, mongooses, honey badgers, and spotted hyenas, with the monitor lizard being the largest threat to crocodilian nests across both Africa and Asia. Hatchlings themselves are often targets for predation as well with many predators lurking near nesting areas, waiting for hatchlings to emerge, such as birds of prey. With some eggs also not developing properly, leading to malformed hatchlings with low chances of survival. Once in the water, hatchlings are also subjected to the threat of predation from fish, snakes, and turtles. Once sub-adult or adult, mortality rates drop sharply as most crocodilians are the apex predator of their given environment with few natural predators. The only exceptions being big cats of South America, such as the jaguar, targeting caimans, and elephants and hippos preemptively killing any crocodiles they see in self-defense. Cannibalism and fights to the death have been known to occur among crocodilians of the same species as well. Male rivals occasionally killing each other during mating season. Growth and subsequently sexual maturity is linked to accessibility of food rather than age. With most crocodilians reaching maturity once they grow past a certain size. As all crocodilians also continue to grow their entire lives with lifespans ranging between 35 to 75 years. The name crocodile is derived from the Greek terms for pebble and worm believed to be referring to the Nile crocodile's tendency to bask along the pebbled shores at the river's edge. Crocodilians have featured heavily in indigenous mythologies around the world. In ancient Egypt, worshipped as both Amit, a soul-devouring demon, as well as Sobek, god of fertility and protection, relating the dual roles of ferocious hunter and nurturing mother of the Nile crocodile. With both Aztecs and Mayans associating crocodilians, such as caimans, with both fertility and death. Historical descriptions often attributed crocodilians with erroneous or fantastical properties, such as associating the nictitating fluids with tears shed for the crocodile's victims, and frequent exaggerations of their size believed to have led to Western stories of dragons. Even the biblical story of Leviathan, a giant reptilian sea beast foreshadowing the end of the world. Today though, crocodilians have been thoroughly well documented by herpetologists around the world. 
Many questions about their anatomy remain unanswered and shrouded in superstition and mystery. With Asian folk beliefs holding that alligator meat can prevent diseases and many internal organs can have medicinal properties. Out of 24 now living species, nine have been known to attack humans, including the saltwater crocodile, Nile crocodile, American alligator, black caiman, the Morlitz crocodile, the mugger crocodile, the American crocodile, the freshwater crocodile, and the gharial. Though many tacks have been in defense of their nests or territories, crocodilians are highly opportunistic and have been known to attack humans as a source of food. With particularly the Nile crocodile believed to be responsible for over 300 deaths yearly, with two-thirds of the attacks being fatal, as the Nile crocodile, after grabbing hold of its prey, drags it down into the water, spinning to rapidly tear off large chunks of flesh from the victim. Likewise, half a dozen people are attacked yearly in the United States by alligators. With increasing human settlements in Florida Everglades putting people in close proximity to their natural habitats, while other crocodile breeds, such as the West African crocodile in Mauritania, appears indifferent even to humans swimming alongside it. As a result, crocodile hunting has long since been popular. Their tough scaly skin often used for clothing, shoes, and handbags. Though the illegal trade of hunted crocodile skins and meat has gradually been supplanted with that of legally farmed ones beginning in the 1970s. When eggs were taken from the wild, and alligators and crocodiles have been raised in specifically designed farms, where they are born and bred to reach their maximum size, before being killed for their skin, meat, and internal organs. Today, the biggest threat to crocodilians is the rapid decline of their natural habitats. Many marshlands and riverbeds being dried out and made into human settlements, with less and less of their natural tropical habitat viable to sustain them. Due to loss of habitat, as well as extensive fishing of their natural prey, gharials in particular have been reduced to a few hundred individuals remaining. Only intensive conservation efforts have been shown to be effective, such as that of the American alligator. Once highly endangered, now flourishing thanks to a concentrated effort to preserve their natural habitat and eliminating poaching. though they may already have had their day in the sun. Many of their kin long since extinct. There might still be a future ahead of the ancient kings of the river. As they continue to stock waters everywhere. As one of the last remaining predators on earth. <laughs>